Hi students, welcome to MC Square Chemistry video classes. In this video, we are going to discuss about Section C, Model Paper 1, Second Year Chemistry. So, in this, from the electrochemistry, they have given one unexpected question. Means, usually we what we expect that has not given. The question is, give the different types of batteries and explain the construction and working of each type of battery. Usually that uh, question uh, from batteries, they may ask you sometimes, most of the times they asked you uh, for two marks. Sometimes they might ask you uh, for four marks also. So if you learn this, of course, it may not come for eight marks, but there is a chance to come either two marks or four marks. So have the focus on this answer. Again, I am reading the question, give two different types of batteries and explain the construction and working of each type of battery. So, no need to give anything uh, introduction about this. You can directly ask that different types of batteries, right? Now, we will go for how many types of batteries, two types of batteries, right? Those are the important type. So, there are there are two types of batteries two types of batteries they are so what are they you have to write here you know that they are primary battery primary and secondary secondary batteries primary battery and secondary batteries correct so we will discuss one by one how they constructed what is the cathode what is the anode present in that and how the reactions occurs at cathode and anode so whenever i am explaining the primary battery you just observe the first diagram primary battery diagram okay so first primary battery you know that primary battery means that is uh, you have seen that in the wall clocks and the transistors what is the cell is there in the torch lights also so all of them comes under batteries so if you observe what is the purpose of them you can define this easily so when uh, we are using one battery for a clock it won't come for a long time yes or no after some time, uh, the, those batteries will become dead and we can't use them, correct? We can't recharge them. We have to throw them out. That type of batteries are called primary batteries. So how can you say, how can we define this? The batteries can say that what I told just now, that only will write. The batteries, the batteries which can we re reuse them? No. Can we recharge them? No. That only we write. Which cannot, which cannot be recharged, which cannot be recharged and reused, reused after over a period of time, over a period of time are known as primary batteries are known as primary batteries so we can't recharge them and we can't reuse them again right those type of batteries are called primary batteries now observe the diagram after you got the definition now observe the diagram whatever we are going to discuss about that is totally depends upon the diagram only that cell you have seen the torch, correct? So what are there? Uh, example, we'll read first example. What is the example just now I told that? Those are called as dry cell. Dry cell. Where we are using this? Used in clock or transistors or 
torches anything you can write okay so the next point based on the diagram we can write if you observe that what is the cathode is there that is carbon rod in the diagram i wrote in the corner carbon rod is the cathode anode is what zinc cup means this cell contains zinc correct that cup made up made by this cup total made by zinc so this cell this cell contains zinc which acts as anode which acts as anode that that is what we wrote there in the diagram also that zinc the cell contains zinc that is acting as anode right so next which one is acting as cathode carbon rod this rod right this one is acting as cathode carbon rod acts as cathode one more thing you have to add here this carbon rod is surrounded by this manganese dioxide and carbon black that we have to include so the next point will come that the carbon rod that is surrounded by what surrounded the carbon rod surrounded by manganese dioxide and carbon black means powder of the carbon acts as cathode i wrote from diagram only these two points last two points second and third cathode so we wrote what is cathode what is anode still if you observe the diagram that paste is there nh4cl plus zncl2 paste ammonium chloride and zinc chloride paste where is that in between these two carbon rod and this cup this total area space is there right in that space that paste is there okay so the space between electrodes the next point you can write that the space between electrodes electrodes means cathode and anode between electrodes electrodes filled by filled by nh4cl ammonium chloride and zncl2 zinc chloride paste that is what we wrote in the diagram also here this space between this carbon rod and cup that total space is filled by ammonium chloride and zinc chloride paste okay now what are the reactions occurs there that is the important thing reactions occurs at anode and cathode reactions at anode you know that at anode always oxidation occurs anox remember this word anox and for anode ox for oxidation at anode always oxidation takes place oxidation means increase in oxidation number right or loss of electrons is oxidation so here zinc zinc solid will become that zinc plus 2 plus 2 electrons if you observe that zinc 0 to plus 2 it has become means what oxidation it undergoes oxidation okay next cathode at cathode always reduction takes place that that word we, we are using here red cat for oxidation we are using the word anox for reduction we are using that red cat red means reduction cat means cathode means at cathode reduction takes place opposite to the decrease in oxidation state is called reduction so what will undergo here whatever we have taken this manganese powder this manganese powder and we have taken one paste right nh4cl so here nh4 plus gives rise to it will become mno2 plus nh4 plus will become nh3 
फर्स्ट इट इट विल बिकम दैट एम एन ओ एंड इन द प्लेस ऑफ वन मोर ओ इट विल बिकम दैट ओ हेच मीन्स वॉट वन हेच हैज कम फ्रॉम एन एच फोर प्लस रिमेनिंग पार्ट इज वॉट वन हेच हैज कम फ्रॉम दिस मीन्स रिमेनिंग पार्ट इज एन हेच थ्री एन हेच थ्री यर इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर नॉट बैलेंस दट इज वाई एम एडिंग वन इलेक्ट्रॉन हियर प्लस इलेक्ट्रॉन you have to practice these reactions definitely you should write otherwise you lose marks some marks okay so at anode oxidation takes place at cathode reduction takes place okay finally we got ammonia where at cathode okay so the ammonia the ammonia produced produced at cathode at cathode reacts with reacts with which metal that zinc is separated right so react with that zinc zinc plus 2 zinc plus 2 to give one complex compound what is that zinc tetramine tetramine zincate tetramine zincate to ion this is the complex compound so that's about primary battery just now till now we discussed about the primary battery only first we have to write the definition and example then just to see the diagram practice the diagram also based on the diagram what is the anode what is the cathode and what are that paste which paste we are using and what is the reactions at anode and cathode so primary battery completed got it now we'll go for secondary battery secondary battery so just opposite to primary battery the definition what we wrote there the batteries which cannot be recharged and reused after over a period of time are known as primary batteries that is primary batteries definition what about secondary battery now opposite to that the batteries which which can be recharged just to remove this which can be recharged and reused reused after a period of time also also are called secondary batteries also are are known as secondary batteries correct secondary batteries now you observe the diagram of secondary battery only primary battery already completed what are the examples here you observe that in the automobile industry so many vehicles are containing one battery correct that battery is what lead storage battery lead storage batteries lead storage batteries used in used in automobile correct lead storage battery so many of you watched it i think so in automobiles now come to the diagram we can't uh, draw that exactly 100% but that will be like this as it is we are having one anode one cathode right and electrolytic solution also is there anode is what anode is lead cathode is what lead oxide anode is lead cathode is lead oxide okay so you can write that point first lead lead acts as lead acts as anode it is there in the diagram and lead oxide pbo2 lead oxide acts as cathode that is acting as cathode lead acting as anode and lead oxide acts as cathode 
right? And the still remaining part is what? Some solution we have taken here. What is that? Sulfuric acid solution, H2SO4 solution. That is acting as and and 38% sulfuric acid acts as electrolytic solution. Electrolytic solution. That is electrolytic solution. So we wrote what is anode, we wrote what is cathode and we wrote what is electrolytic solution. Okay. So always remember a good secondary battery will give more number of uh, recharge cycles. Means what? You, you, you may use that mobile. We are recharging, right? Always. When that battery will become down, again we will recharge. Again that battery will normally work. Correct? Means whenever it will give more number of recharge and discharge cycles, then that is considered as that is considered as a good secondary battery. More number of recharge cycles it will give. Right? So whenever it is not giving like that, we consider that as a bad secondary battery. Right? So mobile battery also we can say that example for secondary battery. Now reactions. Directly we will go for the reactions. Reactions at anode and cathode. Reactions at anode. At anode, just now I said that anox we have to remember at anode oxidation only takes place. Correct? Oxidation takes place. So at anode we are having what? Lead. Lead will become what? Lead will become that oxidation number increases. Lead plus electrolytic solution what we have taken? Sulfuric acid. So sulfuric acid contain sulfate ions will give PbSO4. If you observe, everything are balanced except electrons. Here, two electrons extra are their left side. The two electrons we are adding at right side. This is the reaction at anode. Very simple, right? At cathode, what is the reaction? At cathode. So, what we are using as cathode? PbO2, lead oxide. So, take that lead oxide. PbO2, lead oxide plus again sulfate ions because that is also containing that 38% sulfuric acid. Then what will you get? PbSO4 first. PbSO4. Correct. Now, remaining here, if you observe that here, two extra oxygens are there. Based on the stoichiometric balancing equations, we have to add here two water molecules because two oxygens are extra here. Here, deficiency is there. Whatever the number of oxygen deficiency, the same number of water molecules we have to add to H2O, right? Now here, four extra hydrogens are there. That is why we have to add here four H plus to balance them. Now, if you observe the electrons here, two electrons less here when compared with this. Here, zero here plus two. So, the two electrons we are adding here, two electrons. Correct? That is at anode and cathode reactions. Now, what is the overall reaction? The overall reaction. The overall reaction. That overall reaction means we have to add them, both oxidation and reduction. That we have to add. These two electrons and two electrons will get cancelled. Right? Remaining is what we have to write. What is the remaining part? That remaining part is Pb here. Pb as it is. Pb plus SO4 minus 2. What is that? Pb SO4, right? So, write whatever we have here. Pb plus PbO2 plus here 4H plus here 2SO4. That will become what? H2SO4. 2H2SO4 gives rise to PbSO4, PbSO4. How many are there? Two are there. 2 PbSO4 plus two water molecules. This is the reaction occurs always. Whenever you recharge, this reaction will become like this. When that is discharging, this reaction will become like this. So that more number of charge and discharge cycles will become based on this reaction only. 
okay this reaction only so this is about secondary battery correct first you write that definition then what is anode what is cathode what is electrolyte then reactions very simple so primary for uh, primary battery for construction and diagram will get four marks for secondary battery also will get four marks okay then go for the next question 20 question number 20 so one has come from electrochemistry already and one more chance from which chapter you can guess the next chapter is p block elements right p block elements so question number 20 has come from p block elements so what is that question either that is expected or not that we'll discuss so that question expected only how is ozone prepared from oxygen you know that right explain its reactions with so some compounds has given so how is ozone prepared very simple question very very important question how is ozone prepared so he has given that reactant from where prepared from where oxygen prepared from oxygen how will you prepare ozone from oxygen and how explain it reactions with explain its reaction means ozone reaction with some compounds has given here number one c2h4 that you know that ethylene number two potassium iodide number three HZ that is mercury and number 4 PBS that is lead sulfide. This is the question which has come from P block elements. So here it should explain that how ozone we can prepare from the oxygen. That is very very easy right. So many times I think you practiced it properly. Just that undergoes silent electric discharge when oxygen undergoes silent electric discharge in a Siemens ozonizer that is the name of ozonizer okay so first preparation of ozone preparation of ozone from where from oxygen that we know that so what we write We can write that the silent electric, the silent electric discharge, discharge of pure oxygen, pure oxygen in, I told you that to prepare ozone different types of instrument are there one of that the best one is here is siemens siemens ozonizer in siemens ozonizer so the silent electric discharge of pure oxygen in siemens ozonizer gives ozone right ozone so, oxygen is becoming ozone. O2 gives rise to O3. So, to balance that, what we can write? We can write here 3 and we can write here 2. So, this is the ozone. This one is oxygen. So, the first part of the question completed that. How is ozone prepared from oxygen? Very simple. Now the reactions, very easy. The first reaction with what? Ethylene. The first reaction with, reaction with ethylene. Reaction with 
इथिलीन सी टू एच फोर एज गिवेन राइट देन यू कैन राइट द नेम्स सी टू एच फोर सो वाट कैन वी राइट वो जोन आई विल राइट द इक्वेशन फर्स्ट राइट ओ थ्री प्लस सी टू एच फोर सी टू एच फोर इज नथिंग बट इथिलीन यू कैन राइट लाइक दिस सी एच टू डबल बॉन्ड सी एच टू इथिलीन so even you learn this you learned this in the first year also which is called as ozone analysis that only has given ozone analysis only so o3 reacting with ethylene first to give that ch2 single bond ch2 bonds with oxygen here and here oxygen okay this is called what this is called ethylene ozonoid because it is coming from ethylene so you can say that ethylene ethylene ozonoid then it will undergo hydrolysis in the presence of zinc okay then it will become ch2o means formaldehyde this has given that formaldehyde now based on the reaction you can write the statement so how can you write ozone reacts with ozone reacts with ethylene to give ethylene ozonoid which undergoes hydrolysis in the presence of zinc to give formaldehyde this is also known as ozonolysis you may write that or not okay so you can write that c2h4 reacts with i am writing the statement now with ozone to form to form ethylene ozonoid ethylene ozonoid correct which which undergoes which undergoes hydrolysis which undergoes hydrolysis in the presence of zinc in the presence of zinc to give what is it giving finally to give formaldehyde to give formaldehyde that's it that's about reaction with ethylene ethylene reacts with ozone to form ethylene ozonoid which undergoes hydrolysis in the presence of zinc to give formaldehyde next reaction with ki next reaction is what reaction with ki so when ozone reacts with potassium iodide ke means what potassium iodide so what will happen so reaction with ke again i will write that reaction first here potassium iodide moist ke we have taken means we have to take water also moist ke moist means wet means what we have to add some water then what will happen it will give koh plus i2 koh is what potassium hydroxide potassium hydroxide and what is the product we got here iodine iodine is the main product what about that reactant here we have taken potassium iodide with water means wa that is called moist moist potassium iodide so ozone reacts with moist potassium iodide to give iodine correct here balancing it is not balanced here two iodines are there that is why i have taken 2k now here two potassiums are there that is why i have taken 2k 
two hydrogens, two hydrogens okay, but oxygens are four are there here, here only two are there. Now that byproduct one more will come that O2, oxygen. Now what is the statement we can write? How can you write the statement? So the moist potassium iodide, the moist potassium iodide oxidized oxidized to iodine oxidized to iodine when it reacts with ozone when it reacts with ozone that is the statement means what ozone reacts with moist potassium iodide and oxidized to iodine in that way also you can write Ozone reacts with moist potassium iodide and oxidized to iodine. That is also you can write. Okay. That is the product. Now the remaining two reactions also we will discuss. One is with mercury, another one is PBS. Okay. So mercury, this question, this one important. Sometimes they may ask you this for two marks also. What is the reaction of ozone with ethylene? Okay. Try to remember that. Very, very important. Now, we will go for the third reaction with mercury. This also important for two marks also. Reaction with mercury. Sometimes they may ask you for two marks. Reaction with mercury. Hg. Third one. Right. So, what will happen here? When we have taken mercury and add some ozone there usually any liquid have any liquid has some meniscus meniscus means that half moon structure whenever we are adding that ozone to mercury that a half moon structure is lost means meniscus lost and mercury is having some lusterness means brightness that also will be lost because of ozone and formation of that Hz2O, right? Mercurous oxide. This total thing is named as tailing of mercury. So, first I am writing the statement. When mercury, that is Hz, reacts with ozone, reacts with ozone and form and form Hg2O, mercurous oxide, okay, mercurous oxide. So, first you write this equation. So, mercury reacts with ozone to give mercurous oxide. Hg2O is what? Mercurous oxide, but it is not balanced, correct? So, what shall we write? Mercurous oxide. To balance that, here 2 Hg, right? 2 Hg plus O3. Still, it is not balanced. Oxygen. We have to add this oxygen here. Okay. Now, this is that reaction of mercury with ozone. And remaining part also, we have to mention that when ozone is added when ozone is added to mercury mercury it's it lose it loses meniscus meniscus and lustreness lustreness of mercury which is known as this is extra i can write which is known as even if you can stop here when they asked for eight marks known as tailing of mercury tailing of mercury right mercury reacts with ozone to form mercurous oxide by losing its meniscus and lusterness is called as tailing of mercury this is also very, 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 very important for two marks also. 
only this this reaction they ask for two marks if they want to ask for two marks they will ask only this you have to write this for two marks you will get okay next the last one reaction with pbs reaction with pbs that is lead sulfide that is in black color actually that also will mention so the black lead sulfide the black lead sulfide oxidized oxidized to white lead sulfate lead sulfate the black lead sulfide oxidized to white lead sulfate very simple reaction right so you can write that pbs plus o3 gives rise to what will it give that is black color lead sulfide is becoming that lead sulfate white color lead sulfate and the byproduct is oxygen try to balance this this is lead sulfide lead sulfide which is in black color try to balance that until i will write this lead sulfate lead sulfate this is in white color white so to balance this already four there here we can write this 4o3 then it will become what 12 oxygens there we are having already four still we want eight here also four 4o2 so that's about reaction with pbs the black lead sulfide reacts with ozone and oxidized to white lead sulfate okay the black lead sulfate oxidized to white lead sulfate when reacts with ozone that is we forgot when reacts with ozone now the question completely we discuss the answer of that question number 20 okay next the next question the next question you can guess the next question that is from organic chemistry correct organic compounds containing carbon hydrogen oxygen from that question has come describe the following acetylation kenizaru reaction cross aldol condensation and decarboxylation right so many of you can guess this answer right very very important so one by one we'll discuss in simple way first one acetylation acetylation so to explain this before if you take alcohol or phenol or amine alcohol or phenol or amine R O H alcohol. If benzene is there in the presence of R, that is called phenol. And R N H2, that is called amine. So this hydrogen, this hydrogen or this hydrogen, these are called active hydrogens. Active hydrogen. So this active hydrogen is replaced by C H3 C O. This group. This group is called acetyl group. Okay. So the reaction in which alcohol or phenol or amines active hydrogen replaced by ch3co group then that is called acetylation okay very simple right so here the active hydrogen of you can say that the active hydrogen the active hydrogen of alcohol or phenol or amine amine is replaced by is replaced by acetyl 
acetyl that is CH3CO. CH3CO, acetyl group. Acetyl group. The active hydrogen of alcohol or phenol or amine replaced by acetyl group. So, what will it give? To give ester. To give ester or amide. In the presence of in the presence of corresponding reagent in the presence of corresponding reagent any reagent that, that is based upon what re reactant we have taken corresponding reagent okay is called acetylation is called acetylation so we can't take alcohol or phenol or am I any one you have to take not all the all the things now i'm taking that phenol right phenol this is the phenol benzene with oh is called phenol this phenol reacts with acetyl chloride ch3cocl in the presence of acetic n hydride this is the short form of acetic n hydride so according to that what active hydrogen of alcohol or phenol or amine replaced by this group right so this hydrogen replaced by this what will come now in the place of hydrogen in the place of hydrogen of phenol we write that o c o c h 3 that's it okay the remaining part is what that is uh, this from this ac to o acetic acid will come no need to discuss about that this is phenol. What is the product? Phenyl acetate. Phenyl acetate. Okay, active hydrogen of phenol is replaced by acetyl group that is called, this is known as acetic acid. Byproduct is what? Acetic acid. ACOH. Acetic acid. Right? So, this is about acetylation. This is what acetyl chloride. Acetyl chloride. This one acetic N hydride. Ac2O is acetic N hydride. Next, Kenizaro reaction. Kenizaro reaction. So, in this Kenizaro reaction, we will take aldehydes which are not having alpha hydrogens. Alpha hydrogens means what? The hydrogens which are present next to, to the functional group. Those are called alpha hydrogens. Means those are attached to the alpha carbons. Alpha carbon means again which are next to, to the functional group. So, what we can write this for Kenizaro reaction? The aldehydes the aldehydes which which does not contain aldehydes which do not contain do not contain alpha hydrogen do not contain alpha hydrogen the aldehydes which do not contain alpha hydrogen undergoes undergoes disproportionation reaction disproportionation you have read this in the first year proportionation disproportionation reaction means simultaneously both oxidation and reduction is called disproportionation reaction so the aldehydes which do not have alpha hydrogens undergoes disproportionation reaction disproportionation reaction in the presence of in the presence of concentrated NaOH concentrated alkali anything alkali but we have taken here sodium hydroxide okay so which does not have alpha hydrogen example is formaldehyde HCOH here also HCOH. Okay. In the presence of concentrated NaOH. 
disproportionation reaction means what simultaneously undergoes oxidation and reduction so one of the formaldehyde here two formaldehydes are there two moles of formaldehydes are there one of the formaldehyde undergoes reduction means what addition of hydrogens and another one is undergoing that reduction one more formaldehyde that undergoes reduction uh, oxidation sorry oxidation so reduction first one undergoes reduction right means what addition of hydrogens already it has two hydrogens correct we are adding one more hydrogen from this and oh ch3 oh that is called methanol and here remaining part of the sodium hydroxide will come here plus h co remaining part of hydro that sodium hydroxide is ona there is the salt of carboxylic acid. So, what are the products here? Methanol. So, how we are getting means? So we have to discuss the mechanism, but we don't need now. Don't just remember like this. Sodium formate because this is IP exam only. No need to discuss about the mechanism. Formaldehyde will become methanol. One of the formaldehyde become methanol by undergoing reduction. One of them undergoes oxidation to give sodium formate. This is called Kenizaru reaction. So, CH, one of the H from this, one of the H from this, CH3OH. And HCO, this H already not there, this ONA will attack here, HCONA, sodium formate. That is about Kenizaru reactions. Kenizaru reaction. Okay. We will go for the third one. Very, very important. This third one, sometimes they may ask you for two marks also. What is uh, uh, aldol condensation or cross aldol condensation? Aldol condensation means same aldehydes. Cross aldol condensation means different aldehydes. Very simple. Same aldehydes undergoing condensation means aldol condensation. Different aldehydes undergoing means that is called cross aldol condensation. So now, our topic is cross aldol condensation means what two different aldehydes two different aldehydes we have to take and they undergo condensation cross aldol condensation cross aldol condensation so in the kenizaro reaction we have taken aldehydes which do not have alpha hydrogens but in this aldol or cross aldol condensation, definitely we have to take the aldehydes which have alpha hydrogens compulsory. Okay. So, we can take that. The condensation of the condensation of two different aldehydes. If it is only aldol means same aldehydes. This is cross aldol, right? That is why I am writing the different aldehydes. Two different aldehydes aldehydes what is the condition which have alpha hydrogens which have alpha hydrogens to give to give four different products four different products different products in the presence of in the presence of dilute NaOH in the presence of dilute not concentrated here dilute NaOH in the Kenizaro concentrated NaOH we have to remember that reagents very very important the condensation of two different aldehydes which have alpha hydrogens that is compulsory and they are giving how many products four products so example very very important try to understand this i am taking two different aldehydes ch3 cho what is this called one two carbons are there eth and aldehyde that is why ethanol plus one more i am taking that propanol ch3 ch2 cho three carbons are there that is why propanol if you know the nomenclature these are very easy to write the names propanol here alpha hydrogens how many are there for this this is the alpha alpha carbon three alpha hydrogens are there 
here this one alpha carbon is this not this alpha carbon is this not this this one is alpha carbon this is not alpha this is beta carbon so alpha hydrogen how many are there two are there okay now it will give four different products to write these different products we have one trick to remember them to dry uh, we can take the rough work here first one take this as a this one is b first you write a a a plus a means what this one and this one ch3 ch2 you can write this in this way also right remember that ch3 c double bond o h okay you can write in that way also plus one more we have to take what a only that is a ch3 i am writing like this cho try to understand this this is a this is also a plus a we have taken this is a this is also a okay ch3 c double bond o h now i am just removing this water i just removing that water what is the product will come what we are having here ch3 ch see there and tell me ch3 then ch then double bond then ch then cho that's it that is one product okay you can you can uh, take this in the rough work that is completed product we got now what is the name of this total how many carbons are there 1 2 3 and here in this place second place alkene is there means in but in four carbons means but alkene is there means what at second position so two butenol this is the name of this two butenol okay now you take b and b before we have taken a and a right now b and b so ch3 ch2 c double bond oh plus now you observe carefully where we have to take should not take this carbon we have to take this carbon so first i am writing that carbon because that is containing alpha hydrogens now this carbon i am writing here ch3 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 ch2 ch2 remaining part is what cho now we have to remove the water again here this oxygen and this hydrogen what we are getting now try to tell that in the same way ch3 first ch3 then ch2 ch2 then ch then double bond then c with ch3 okay then cho that's it now here what are that carbons 1 2 3 4 5 so we'll get that at second position methyl is there two methyl two methyl total how many carbons five two methyl pent pent two enol pent two enol two methyl pent two enol or you may write two methyl two pentenol also that is also correct okay second product has come now we'll go for the third one now we wrote that a a b b now a b then b a okay a b a is what here ethanol c h 3 c double bond o h plus propanol is what this we have to take first c h 2 here c h 3 then c h o we have to remove water here oxygen here hydrogen so remaining part is what again see there and tell me ch3 i wrote then ch then double bond then c ch3 then ch o again we got only four carbons correct ch3 ch double bond c ch3 ch o what do you get now same like this but number of carbons are different 1 2 3 4 remaining as is here pent will come but that's it two methyl because at second position only methyl is there two methyl but but two enol but two enol in the place of pent just i wrote but okay 
and finally the last one is what b a means first you have to take b then a you have to take so c h 3 c h 2 c sorry c h 3 c h 2 c double bond o h plus c h 3 i wrote like this c h o okay again as it is we have to remove the water correct so remaining part is what you tell me c h 3 c h 3 then c h 2 c h 2 then c h then double bond c h c h o whatever here that only i wrote c h 3 c h 2 c h double bond c h c h o now how many carbons 1 2 3 4 5 like this 2 butanol 4 carbons are there means 2 butanol now 5 carbons are there that is why you can write what 2 pentanol 2 pentanol so 4 different products we got already okay if you understand this very very easy but you have to practice more number of times very 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 important cross aldol and aldol if aldol means these many 4 products will not come Cross aldol only will get four products, different products we got. In aldol, we will take only CH3CHO, CH3CHO. You can write this first product. That's it. Aldol will be completed. Okay, cross aldol is not like that. We are getting the four different products. And finally, the last one, fourth, decarboxylation. The name itself has that decarboxylation means we, are, we have to remove something. What is that something? Carbon dioxide decarboxylation, right? Decarboxylation means we have to remove the carbon dioxide from where we are removing and what we are getting in the presence of what, then we are getting that decarboxylation reaction very easily. Decarboxylation very, very easy when compared with the remaining three. Just carboxylic acid salts loses carbon dioxide. The salts of carboxylic acids. Okay. The salts. The salts of carboxylic acids. Carboxylic acids loses or removed CO2 carbon dioxide in the presence of in the presence of soda lime in the presence of soda lime soda lime means combination of sodium hydroxide and calcium oxide in the presence of soda lime to give alkanes this is also we have seen in that first year you read it in the first year Right, that preparation of alkanes, you got that in the preparation of alkanes. The salts of carboxylic acids, salt of carboxylic acid, I am taking that CH3, COONA, salt of carboxylic acid. This is what sodium acetate salt, sodium acetate. It loses what carbon dioxide in the presence of what NaOH. And CaO, calcium oxide, loses carbon dioxide, right? This completely will remove like this, NaO, CO, Na2CO3. You just uh, try to understand. This CH3 is there, one hydrogen is there, right? That hydrogen will attack that CH3, will get CH4. CH4 is what? Methane. Methane is what? Alkane. Remaining is what? Na2CO3, sodium carbonate. Sodium carbonate. This is called decarboxylation. The salts of carboxylic acids loses carbon dioxide in the presence of soda lime to give alkane is called decarboxylation. Is called decarboxylation. So that's about the last eight marks question in that model paper of intermediate board most of the questions may repeat
in our exam that is why try to learn all of them thoroughly even you can watch that model paper too also right if you prepare all the things very well you can get you can score good marks right all the best thank you bye bye